song number, let's open, 108. Listen to a wondrous story. Sing. Oh, listen to a wondrous story. Counted once among the lost. Let's sing a little bit faster. Oh, listen to a wondrous story. Sing. Oh, listen to a wondrous story Counted once among the lost Yet one came down from heaven's glory Saving us at awful cost Who saved us from eternal Let's open hymn number 206. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Sing. Face to face with Christ my Savior.
Luciano Face to face with my Redeemer Jesus Christ Who knows me so Face to face shall I It may be at morn, sing. It may be at morn when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come. Let's open to 29. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels sing. All hail the, the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Ladies, stand up too. Yes, it sing. Yes. I can't hear. Ye seed, let's sing. Ye seed of Israel's chosen race, ye ransomed of the fall. Let's sing. Of him who saves you by his grace and crowned him Lord of Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial fall to him all majesty as pipe and crown him Lord of all to him all majesty as pipe and Happy Sabbath Church. God is good. Now, may I take this uh, gracious opportunity to invite you uh, uh, for these announcements on behalf of the church. Uh, before I make these announcements, uh, I want us to enter into prayer. Shall we pray? Gracious and holy Father who is in heaven, Father, we thank you for the gift of life and the gift of the Sabbath which you gave us. We want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to congregate together in thy holy sanctuary to listen to you, to praise you, to worship you, and now to enable me to make these announcements. Our Father and our God, as I make these announcements, I call upon the Holy Spirit to take possession of each one of us, prepare us to receive what you want us to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I have a, a few announcements to make uh, this morning. And I want to remind the congregation that is in the church, outside the church, uh, and those who are coming in, that uh, the week which is being ushered today is a week on uh, stewardship. And uh, this week, our Father in heaven has sent a man servant by the name Pastor Ngugi. Pastor Ngugi 
is the director of stewardship in our conference, Central Rift Valley uh, Conference. He will be taking us through the stewardship uh, week. And indeed, uh, uh, he will start today. Now, tomorrow, we are expected to be here at 4.30 to listen to the message which the uh, pastor has for us. That is uh, tomorrow. After tomorrow, uh, on Monday up to Friday, we shall be congregating here at 5.30 every day to listen to the message which God has given him uh, for us. That is a key announcement for the whole week. Uh, the lesson study, for those who are not aware, uh, I'm reminding you that the Sabbath school has started the lesson study classes. We normally congregate inside the church here in groups. And then the happiness class is normally behind the church. So you are invited to come and share the word of God with others. Now, there is the issue of uh, the coming year and the handing over of offices. The handing over is going to be done on 4th December 2021, starting in the afternoon. Uh, every departmental head is requested to make up uh, notes, a report, and hand over that report to the church clerk's office for filing. And that is the report that you will uh, use to do the handing over exercise, which will be done on that Sabbath afternoon in a business meeting. Now, our pastor has been on leave. Uh, today, he is with us here. And uh, I want to mention that uh, Pastor, uh, starting on 28th uh, of this month, is going for a crusade at Nyakinwa in Naivasha. So Pastor, again, will not be with us. But on 4th, Pastor again will be with us. If there are any developments, we shall let you know. Now, there is a special board. Uh, a special board that is uh, in front of us. Tomorrow, we are having a special board Thank you, Elder. Members, happy Sabbath. Happy day. Um, I have the following announcements from the board. The board sitting on the 14th of November, 2021, under minute number 80, stroke RB11, stroke 2020, 2021, um, under the high item letters and names, received transfers in and transfers out. Now we have four members who are transferring in. And since this is the second reading and we are going to take a vote, I request that if the, member, if the members are present in the sanctuary, as I call out the name, please rise <coughs> um, so that we can appreciate you 
and uh, be able to know whom we are voting in for. Uh, the first name is uh, Evelyn Momanyi. Evelyn Momanyi is transferring in from SDA Church Millennium in Kisi to SDA Church Creta. Sister Evelyn Momanyi, she's right there. Thank you, sister. The second name, just remain standing, please. The second name is Marilyn Sada Kasemo. Marilyn Sada Kasemo. She is transferring in from SDA Church Kizingo, Mombasa, to SDA Church Crater. Is Marilyn in? She was in last Sabbath, those of you who were here. She had a baby who was being prayed for. She was in the church last Sabbath. Now, the other person is Kelly Desmond Odiambo. Kelly Desmond Odiambo is transferring in from SDA Church New Life, Nairobi, to SDA Church Creator. Kelly, uh, Kelly is our, one of our accountants at the Central Rift Valley Conference. And I remember there was a time he preached in this church this year. Now, the fourth name is Rael Nyambega. Rael Nyambega, she's right there at the choir corner. She is transferring in from SDA Church in Gata Bridge to SDA Church Crater. I'm the first one to propose that we accept these members as uh, members of our church. The church clerk has proposed that we accept these members who are coming in as members of our church. Now, those who are in favor, can you raise your hands? All in favor, may God bless you. We accept them to be members of this church, to be with us. Thank you, Elder. Now, next, uh, under that same minute, we had two transfers out. We have uh, the transfer out of, a request to transfer out of Justin Bundy. Justin Bundy, formerly a student at Moi Primary School, was baptized in this church on the 31st of October 2009. And uh, he is requesting his name to be transferred to SDA Church Lanet in Nakuru. The second name is L.C. Nyongesa. L.C. <coughs> is requesting to transfer from SDA Church Crater to SDA Church White House Nakuru. I also move that we accept this request for transfer out. Now again, the church clerk has moved that uh, the members mentioned uh, transfer out. And uh, by a show of hands, I am requesting that you raise your hand if you are in favor that they transfer out by a show of hands. Let them be transferred out. And may God bless them even as they are with us in the other church. Thank you very much. And finally, I want to make this announcement that uh, there are many of you who have put a request to have their names transferred. And um, the requests are in process. Once that um, uh, transfer process goes full cycle, we'll call out the names. And I also want to encourage members who are watching with us regularly and who have been with us for some time or who intend to be with us for at least six months to come forward and uh, give us um, their details so that we can place a request for their transfers in. May God bless you. God bless you and have a blessed Sabbath. Let's open our hymnals, hymn number 319. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Sing. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian.
Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, Lord, I Jesus in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I to be like Jesus in my heart. Let's rise with Be Silent, hymn number 479. Be silent. Sing. Be, be silent. silent. Be Father in heaven, we appreciate you 
and we thank you for the privilege to come to church to worship you. We pray for your presence through the Holy Spirit as we worship in Jesus' name. Praise God, church. Uh, I want to thank God again for this uh, gracious moment that uh, he has given me again to do exactly what is ahead of me. I want uh, to recognize this congregation. And I want to thank God for those who are inside the church and those who are outside there, uh, and even at the gates. I know there are some in the cars there. Uh, all these are God's people. And uh, I want to recognize their presence and to invite them to this divine service. Uh, I'm not sure whether we don't have a visitor, but my prayer is that we have as many visitors as the Lord God has allowed. And on that note, I want to request uh, those who have come to this church for the first time, rise up wherever you are so that we receive you and welcome you in a very special way. If this is your first time to come to this church, can you kindly rise? You can see a brother there and another brother behind there. Okay, and another brother here, sister. Aha, then I'm seeing, uh, although I'm not seeing properly, but uh, most likely there is a vista not inside this church uh, building. And I want uh, to thank God for them. Church, what do you say? Okay. They are welcome. Our brothers and sisters, you are welcome. Uh, kindly join us, even as we worship God and praise him. Now, I want uh, to recognize the church choir. I want to recognize the church choir. Uh, the church choir preaches here every Sabbath. And wherever they are seated, I want to request them. Sometimes I see them seated on that side. I want to request them to rise up. And I want to, uh, to ask the director of the choir to greet the congregation, even as we receive them, greet them back. Okay. May God bless you. God bless you. Now, today, uh, the Lord God appointed uh, those who are going to minister. And uh, I want to also to recognize their presence. And I want to recognize the presence of our sister, uh, Joan Kibon. Uh, Joan Kibon, uh, can you greet this congregation? Happy Sabbath. Welcome. And I also want uh, in a very special way to recognize our young daughter, Blenda Nyaituga. <laughs> you can greet the congregation. Blenda That's... Nyaituga is a daughter uh, to Elder Bui and Gladys. Gladys or Bui. Gladys must be somewhere there. Brenda, can you greet the congregation? Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. And next to Blenda is the father. The father is seated next to the daughter. Happy, Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Most welcome and may God bless you. God bless you. And uh, next to El Umbui is the man servant that God has chosen to break the bread of life. 
Uh, I did mention his name, uh, Pastor Gugi, uh, the Director of Stewardship in the conference, Central Rift Valley Conference. Uh, he will stand, he will wave to you, we shall wave to him, and when his time comes, we will hear uh, more of him, more of his voice. God bless you, Pastor. And uh, next to him, it is uh, me now. <laughs> Elder Matagaru, uh, one of the elders in this church, a servant of God in this church. God bless you. And next to me uh, is our pastor. Pastor John has been, uh, I think he has been uh, on leave, but uh, that leave is uh, physical. He is always uh, in contact with us. And today, again, uh, he's with us. And I will want to kindly uh, ask him to greet the congregation. And more so, I want him uh, to talk more of uh, Pastor Gugi, because although I have brought him on board, my shoes, my shoes is not like pastor's shoes. So pastor, welcome. It's a small size. <clears throat> Hallelujah, church members. God is good. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back. Yes, it was, I was away physically, but we were together. Uh, allow me also to appreciate the presence of our pastor, our ministerial secretary from conference, Pastor Oga. I don't know where he's seated. Thank you, thank you. Pastor, just say hi to the church. Thank you so much. Pastor is our member. He, oh, he has been away for a while. But thank you, Pastor, that you have come, you have decided to come and worship with us. Uh, people of God, we have a special week before us, a stewardship week. I know Pastor will talk more of it, but just choose to be here. We have interesting presentation, presentation that I know they will touch our hearts. And they will even change our point of view in terms of stewardship. And therefore, I do welcome you on, in a special way that every day from 5.30, starting from Monday to 6.15, may you kindly find a place to sit in this church because man servant of God will be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many promises that for sure if God gives me a chance, I will, I will avail myself. I want to pray for those hands. It's a serious, it's a serious, it's a, it's a serious call. Let's pray. Kind and loving Father God in heaven, we are so glad that you always desire to speak to us. And the week before us, Lord, you have chosen to touch our hearts through the messages of how we can be faithful to you in all our spheres of life. Now, Lord, our hearts are up, directed to your heavenly throne. Dear God, promising that to you that we will avail ourselves for this important meeting. When you call and we answer, Dear Lord, you promise us that in times when we'll be calling you, you'll also respond. And so, Lord, may your will be done. Use your man's servant in a special way. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Kindly remember that Elder Umbui is in charge of stewardship. He's the stewardship leader in this church. The divine service continues as scheduled. God bless you.
want to call upon the choristers to come as the rest of the congregation rises. Choristers, kindly come. And the rest of the congregation can rise. Our key text is from the book of uh, the Gospel to St. John, chapter 4, verse uh, 7. And I'm requesting members that unless you have the original King James fashion, don't trouble yourself. Look at the screen. We want to read from one version today. King James Version, chapter 4, verse 7 says, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Our congregational song is uh, 3493. 493, and I request the choristers to guide us as we see. Like the woman at the well, sing. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in the world who are craving the pleasure earthly things afford but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ our Lord fill my cup Lord Matthew 11, verse 28, the word of God says, 
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our Lord Jesus is calling us that we may find a rest from him. Those who are able to find a place and go to their knees, may they do so as we seek the Lord in prayers. Our loving Father, you who is ever gracious to us, though we are sinners, we thank you so much this morning, Lord in heaven, for giving us opportunity to come and seek your face. Yes, Lord, in our hearts, we are burdened with many anxieties. Lord in heaven, we are weak. We need your strength to make us strong. Dear Lord, in faith we lift up our hands towards heaven that you may grasp on them. Dear Lord, as we call upon your holy name, is that Lord, may you meet us the point of our needs. Thank you so much for the way you have led us throughout the week. Yes, Lord, we have engaged ourselves in various activities of this life. In fact, in some point, we drifted away from your presence, knowingly and probably unknowingly. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your forgiveness. Thank you because you know us deep in our hearts. You know our thoughts. Even now, Lord in heaven, you know how empty we are. And you have come so that you may fill up our cups of souls. That, Lord, we may be drawn nearer and nearer to thee, even as we wait for your second return. Thank you, Lord in heaven, for you called each one of us from his or her various places. And you have brought us together to fellowship, to worship and to listen to you speaking to us. Now, Lord, your man's servant is ready to speak to your people. Use him just as an instrument in your hands. Though weak as he is, Lord, help us, Lord, that we may not see him, but we may see you in him. Dear Lord in heaven, we want also to pray for those who are unwell. They might be in this congregation how we pray that your healing hand may be stretched upon them. Father, there are those who are in hospitals. There are those who are at home. There are those, dear Lord, who are grieving for they have lost their beloved ones. May you, Lord in heaven, visit them and carry them through. Above all, continue preparing each one of us for your second return, for it is so near than ever we thought. Thank you for the young ones that we have in this congregation. May you also minister unto them in a language that they'll be able to understand your will and be also prepared for your second coming. And even in this life, they may decide for you every new day they are able to see. Renew our commitment, Lord. Renew our relationship with you. Renew our covenant with you, Lord. Help us to have a walk with you day by day. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you because no one of us will leave this place without his or her blessings. Because that what you have purposed to each one of us. Now these are our prayers praying through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our Lord 
Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. This is yet another moment where we are going to worship God by way of giving. And I want uh, to ask the deacons and the connoisseurs wherever you are, those who are there, to stand up. Now we're going to have a short prayer, even uh, as we enter into this uh, worship. Shall we pray? Gracious and Holy Father who is in heaven, Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, creator of heaven and earth, what you have done to us even as we have congregated together here today during these holy sabbath hours even as we examine ourselves as we return our tithes and give offerings father we want to pray that you forgive us where we have previously gone wrong, and you rekindle us, that Lord, even as we return these tithes and give offerings, we remember to give ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. And at the end of it, glory and honor shall be given unto you, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. As we now return our tithes and give our offerings, I want to request the foresters to lead us by way of songs of praise to our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord God. Let's open our hymnals, hymn 369, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the morning, sing. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dew. Cheers. 
winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Church. Happy day. My name is Pendo Yugi, and let's welcome Madam Joan to take us through the children's story. Thank you, Splenda. Good morning, Church. Before we begin with the children's story, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the teachings that are about to be passed to your people. We pray that, Lord, you may continue to be the great teacher. Help us to listen and follow your ways. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it's time for children's story. Where are the children? Children, can I see you? Very good. So before we start our children's story, I would like to um, make a request. We have a promotion as the children's department um, that uh, on um, the 4th, of December 2021, I believe it's next Sabbath, uh, it will be an Orphan's Day donations by the children's department. So the children are planning to make a donation to a children's home uh, in Cabernet called Sunrise uh, Children's Home. So the representatives from the children's home will fellowship with us. And as they'll be here with us, uh, they'll uh, fellowship with us on that day to gladly receive our donations on that particular day. So as the children's department, uh, we are grateful for those who have already donated, and we request those who have already uh, donated to continue giving, and those who have not yet to give in kind, not only uh, giving money, but in kind. So you can give books, stationery, dry foods, which could be maize, beans, sugar, and anything else that you'd wish to donate to a child. So for further details, you can kindly reach to Sister Gertrude Anyona. On that particular day, as parents encourage their children to give, be reminded, be a rainbow in someone's cloud. I hope you can be able to see that. And be the reason someone smiles today. So you are required or uh, requested to donate over the week and even on that particular Sabbath. 
Thank you so much. Now to our story. Um, today's story is about, uh, the title of the story is Just As You Are. Just As You Are. And a story is told of a man, a 50-year-old man, who, uh, whose name is Chad. So he turned off his Honda 750. I'm told Honda 750 is a kind of a motorcycle. And uh, this kind of, uh, this man um, turned his uh, uh, motorcycle at the parking lot with conflicting, conflicting thoughts because um, he had come late. So he hadn't been in church for a while and he already uh, was in 15 minutes late. I don't know what time is that. Could it be a few minutes to 12 noon? Is that late enough? So what would uh, people think when he walked in a t-shirt? He was dressed in a t-shirt and a faded blue jeans. Would they disapprove of his long hair? So while he was walking in, um, something was compelling him to continue uh, uh, getting in the ch church. But deep inside his heart, uh, he felt that something was missing. So somebody, somehow he felt this was his day to come home. So as he was getting inside the church, a voice within him continued to urge him, Chad, just do it. Just do it. Entering the sanctuary as quietly as possible, he hoped to slip into the last row. But uh, more often than not, the last row is always uh, packed. So he moved down the aisle. Children, I hope you know what an aisle is. Do you? It's a passage just between uh, the rows of seats. It could be this one or the, the others uh, beside. So Chad continued to, 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 to look for seats uh, as he walked. And uh, as he moved down the aisle, it seemed as if every row was jammed. So he was forced to continue coming, coming forward. So the congregation quietly uh, was singing while he was busy looking for a place to sit. And uh, guess what? The congregation was singing quietly. Let's sing together. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Patiently, he's mm -hmm, waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Chad is still looking for a what? For a seat. Come home. Come home, you are weary, come home. Honestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. So as the song proceeded, heads were now turning. And Chad felt that everyone was staring at him. Nervously, he made a quick decision. I guess I'll just sit in the aisle. He thought to himself, let me just sit in, in the aisle. So he, he sat there a moment, uh, feeling as if dozens of eyes were boring into his back. Then he heard footsteps behind him. The Chad's head elder approached. Oh no, he probably will throw me out. So Chad thought, but to the elder, to his utter amazement, uh, the elder just sat, sat beside him. So Chad had found a seat just at the aisle, and this elder was uh, pulling a chair to sit next to Chad. And so he, the elder gently touched him on the shoulder and simply said, glad you are here, brother. And so uh, he quickly placed a hymnal in Chad's hands. And the elder had added and told him that is song number what? Song number 287. So those kind words, a caring gesture, a moving sermon, and an inviting invitation to dinner. And Chad knew he had done what? He had come home. So God wants us as children and as a church. Uh, all of us to be to be loving. He expects the church to be a place of love, acceptance, and 
forgiveness. We could be bruised out there, battered, broken, beaten up. Uh, people will come through the doors of our church this week. And so as children uh, of God, we want to open our arms and hearts to receive them. So for the fathers, the mothers, the youth, the Bible and uh, the Lord reminds us this morning to, to come to him just as we are. Thank you so much. I hope you have learned something. And for that, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the story this morning. How delightful that you accept us just as we are. Glory and honor to your name for this reassurance this morning. For the remaining part of the service, Lord, may your name be glorified. For you prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Church choir, may I welcome you for a special item. Nitaenda popote anituma omokosi Nitaenda ana poni ongosa Sitarudi nyuma kawe kwa sababu Ni Yesu aliemi Put 
Thank you, choir. That was a wonderful presentation. And I'm glad to see the choir. You have done well. It is good to see Odawiri singing in Swahili. I had no idea you can do Swahili that well. Thank you, thank you. Kanisra Mungu Bona Sifiwe. Let me start like any other Adventists because it's our tradition to start with the greetings. We want to pass greetings from the conference, right from our president, Pastor Philemon Odiambo, and the rest of the office. They have sent greetings to Creator Church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Pastor Gideji, thank you for inviting me. Allow me to remove this diaper so that at least we can communicate. The unfortunate thing, Pastor Gideji, you did was to invite me and then invite my boss, Pastor Oga, to sit here. That may make the sermon disappear. It's not easy to preach when your boss is around because you know one simple mistake. Now, Mamuaga Unga. Pastor Oga, thank you for being in the congregation, but I wish I saw you at the end of the presentation. I'm glad to come back to create a church. Brother Obui has been pushing me and reminding me that we have an appointment for this week. Of course, you know who I we personally avoid create a church. I know it's the greatest church and the most beautiful in the conference, but I make a point of avoiding you people all the time, not because I don't love you, but just because of the language barrier. <laughs> I wish you would allow me to be preaching in Kikuyu. I would be coming here every other Sabbath. But anyway, we are here for stewardship week. And from today to the end of the week, I believe we are going to walk together as we share God's word in this stewardship week. And for the entire week, our theme says that God is looking for you, not your money. God is interested in your heart not your resources. Many times when people hear you talk about stewardship, they think you are talking of their wallet. I want to say this week, I want to us to look at stewardship and realize that God's interest is not your resources, but your heart. So where does the wallet come in? We will be looking into that in the course of the week. And for today, we are talking about give me to drink. Our gracious Heavenly Father is the divine hour and the responsibility rest on me to share your word. As we turn to the Holy Oracles, we invite your presence through the Holy Spirit. Kindly talk to your church, inspire our hearts, and let us listen to your voice. 
guide us in the way we should go for this our prayer in Jesus name. The gospel according to John chapter number 4. Light from verse 1 downwards opens with a familiar story of the Samaritan woman. And talks about Jesus and the Samaritan woman or Jesus at the well. I want to start with an elder story. I know we have done the children's story which was very well done. But I have a story for Elder Matagaro. Elder Matagaro, this is your story. It's not for the rest of the church. It's your story. And I want you to imagine this scenario. That you are seated out there as elders of Creator Church. And you are with your pastor, Pastor Givinji. Elders and Pastor Givinji. Seated outside. And where you are seated, you can see the entrance. And all of a sudden, you see a woman walking into the compound of the church. And the pastor tells you, elders, Simameni, all of you go to town and buy food. Go to town and do what? And leave who? Leave who? Leave the pastor alone with who? With the woman. You know, Jesus had how many disciples? Jesus with the 12 disciples, when they came to the well at Sychar, Jesus tells the disciples, go and buy food. And he remains alone at the well with the Samaritan woman. Now, if you want to buy food for 13 people, 12 disciples and Jesus, those are 13 people. How many people should go shopping? Common sense, how many people should go shopping? At most three. But Jesus tells the disciples, all of you go to the nearest town and buy food. And Jesus remains at the well alone. And as Jesus remains at the well alone, we find the Samaritan woman coming to the well. Of course, Jesus, number one, knew because he was God. So he knew what was happening and he knew the woman is coming. Now, as we come to that, you know, verse 2 says, verse 3 says, Jesus left Judea and he departed to Galilee. And he must go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weird with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was around the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me to drink. And this Sabbath afternoon, I want to share with you from this text. Give me to drink. I was very particular. You heard our boy saying, he doesn't want you to read from your different versions. He wants you to follow from this version. Because the actual words that Jesus used to this woman, Give me to drink. Engineer. In the Greek, he says, dos mos pein. There were only three words. Dos mos pein. Give me to drink. Now, these words have more meaning than what you may think. Jesus purposely sends the disciples away and remains with the woman at the well. And I asked you, Elder Matagaro, if your pastor was to send all elders away and remain with a woman in the church, what would come into your mind? Would it disturb you? That he is saying, all of you go and buy food. And you say, no, we are sending three. He says, no, all of you go. This is what Jesus does. And as he sits at the well, the woman comes, there are no greetings. Jesus does not greet the lady. Jesus says, give me 
to drink. In the Jewish economy or in the Jewish system of doing things, these words were heavily loaded. Number one, the Bible says it was the sixth hour. Jews had different times for different people to go to the well. Married, respected women would go to the well early in the morning. Any woman of substance and respect would go to the well early in the morning. All the young ladies of marriageable age would go to the well in the evening. That was their time of going to the well. And then the ranch hour was a preserve of senior bachelors, men who had nobody to draw water for, and ladies of women, women, women of questionable character. They would come allowed lunch hour. But all married women are in the morning. Any young lady in the evening. And when a Jew wanted to woo a woman, you would go to the well at the appointed time. That's why when you read in the book of Genesis chapter number 24, you know the familiar story of Abraham and Eliezer. When Abraham tells his servant Eliezer, don't take a wife for my son Isaac among the Canaanites for whom I dwell. But go back to our original land and get a wife for Isaac. And Eliezer tells Abraham, how will I know? And he says, my God will go with you. And in Genesis 24, I think verse 9, Eliezer tells God, Behold, I stand at the door. Let's read there, Genesis 24, I believe should be verse 9. Just for background purposes so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Genesis 24, verse number, verse number, yes, Genesis 24, verse 14. Verse 14, Genesis 24, 14, the Bible says, And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that you have showed kindness unto my master. Eliezer is saying, when I go to the well, when you read verse 11, it will tell you that he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening when young maidens would go to draw water. And he says, whoever I will say, give me water or give me to drink. And he says, drink, and he also gives a drink to the camels, is the wife that God has chosen. It was an ordinary culture that a young man would go and ask a woman, give me to drink. And when she chose to give you to drink, she would not pass the drink to you. She would hold the drink with her hand and you drink from the, the hand. This is where our matrons got the idea when we go to weddings, you remember that custom where you say, Buana Arusi Nabi Arusi, they borrow from there. You would hold. And even a woman was not interested in you. If you say, give me to drink, she would tell you, there is no drink for you. When she says that, you know what it means. But that was for young men and young women when they would meet in the evenings. Jesus is at the well. And when the woman comes, Jesus tells the woman, give me to drink. And immediately, this woman realizes that this man, number one, is a Jew. Number two, he is asking me for a relationship. So the woman tells Jesus, how dare you ask me for a drink and you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan and we have no relationship. In her mind, it was very clear 
what Jesus is saying. And as they continue with the exchange, when you take your time and look at the book of John chapter number 4, this story will continue and the exchange there between Jesus and the woman is about what Jesus is talking about. Give me to drink. And Jesus will say in verse 10, if you knew the gift of God, and he who is this that is asking you for this relationship, you would have chosen, you would have accepted. And as they continue exchange, number one, this woman will ask Jesus a very good question. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? That means the well that they were taking belonged to who? Belonged to who? To Jacob. And the woman is saying, are you greater than our father Jacob? So that tells you Samaritans are descendants of who? They are descendants of who? Of Jacob. I don't want to go into that because we dealt with it. I remember last year when we were talking about who are Samaritans. But Jesus and the woman, as they continue the exchange, it reaches a point and Jesus tells the woman, excuse me, if you would know the person asking you for a relationship, you would choose because you have been to this well before and you have entered into relationships before but they have always disappointed you. Now, I'm here and if you get into a relationship with me, you will not need to come here again to look for any relationship. And the woman says, if that is the case, I accept your proposal. And contrary to her expectation, Jesus says, go and call your husband. Now, for the first time, it goes into the mind of this woman. The relationship this man is asking me may be different. Because how comes he has been pushing me for a relationship, but when I accept, he is telling me, go and call who? And the woman tells Jesus, I am free. See Namutu. And Jesus says, you have put it lightly. For you have had five relationships. And even the sixth one in the house is not your husband. And the woman diverts the story and says, you Jews worship in Jerusalem as we worship in this mountain. Where are we supposed to worship? And Jesus says, no. God is spirit. True worshipers must worship him in truth and spirit. And the woman says, when the Messiah will come. He will tell us all things. And Jesus says, I am the Messiah. And for the first time, the woman realizes the Messiah is asking me for a different relationship. He is asking for a spiritual relationship. And when she realizes that they are talking with the Messiah and that the relationship the Messiah is looking for is a spiritual relationship, what does she do? She leaves the Jericho there and she starts immediately what you call I will go. She goes back to the city to call people to come and see a Messiah. Now, between the Jews, the, between the disciples of Jesus and this woman who knew Jesus for a longer time, 
Who knew Jesus more? The disciples. And they went into the city, bought food, and came back without telling anybody we are with the Messiah. They never told anybody we are with the Messiah. The woman realizes who the Messiah is. She leaves the Jericho there, goes and calls the entire city to come and see who? To come and see who? Now, between the disciples and the woman, who becomes a better evangelist? Who becomes a better evangelist? She had gone to the well to draw what? Water. Did she take the water home? Jesus was at the well asking, give me a drink. When you read the story, did Jesus drink the water? Did Jesus drink the water? And when she called the entire city, the Bible says, Jesus spoke to the Samaritans and tarried there for four days. And the entire Samaria came to know the Messiah through the efforts of this woman. The woman initially thought Jesus is asking for a physical relationship. And Jesus used the familiar words that could resonate with this woman by saying, give me to drink. But Jesus was not interested in the water. Jesus was interested in what? Jesus was interested in what? In a spiritual relationship. In what? But he asked for what? Why? This was the only point that Jesus would meet with this woman. Now let me ask you. The woman has gone to draw water. And at the well, the woman finds Jesus seated at the well. Who created the water? I'm asking, who created the water? The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was Jesus, is it? And everything was created by who? By Jesus. The children of Israel in the wilderness drank from the rock and the rock was who? Jesus. Now, Jesus is water but he is seated at the well begging for what? Begging for what? If Jesus wanted the water, did he need to borrow from this woman? Did he need to borrow? Himself, he is water. He is what? But he is seated begging for what? And the woman is bragging and saying, the well is deep. The well is what? So you have to rely on me to get the what? Bragging it to who? And Jesus himself, he is what? But the woman thinks Jesus is in need. But Jesus is not asking for the water because he needs the water. What does he need? Spiritual relationship with this woman. But the only way to reach this woman is asking for what? Because that's where the woman goes. Now, Elder, maybe you are wondering where I'm coming from. When you wake up from Monday to Friday, Elder Obui, where do you go? To do what? You go to work to do what? What are you looking for? When you go to work, what are you looking for? Looking for money. Looking for what? All of us, every other day, we go looking for what? For money. And God wants to meet with you. Engineer, God wants you. He wants your heart. And he wants to meet with you. Where is the surest place that Jesus will never miss you? Where is the surest place, Joanne, where Jesus can never miss you? Irrespective of what each and every one of us do, the end result is money. The end result is where? So if Jesus has to be sure to find you, he has to look you where there is what? So he comes and he says, bring tithes and offerings. Brings what? He 
touches money. He touches what? And when he asks for money, engineer thinks God is interested in what? When he says, bring tithes and offerings, you think he wants what? And like the woman at the well, you are bragging because you think it's your what? Engineer. The silver and gold are who? But he is asking for the little one that you have and you think it is yours. But it belongs to who? Now, where do we find gold? Where do you find gold and silver? They are mined where? The earth. And Genesis 24 says, the earth and all the fullness belongs to who? Who created the earth? Who put the gold underground? Who put the gold underground? Now, does he know where that gold is? You know, he created and he put it underground. The question is, is he aware where it is underground or he doesn't know? You know, sometimes you think that he doesn't know. It's you who knows because it's in your ATM. But you see, he has a better ATM than your ATM. You remember that time when KRA guys said, if you work with KRA, forgive me. Do you know there was a day KRA people were following Jesus? And they went to Peter and they told Peter, does your master pay tax? And Peter turned to Jesus and said, what you are KRA, what me fanya nini? And Jesus says, go to the ATM. Just go to the lake. Just go where? And the first fish you will catch, open the mouth and you will get what? You get what? Was that not an ATM? Where? Now, Ovidi, I know you come near the lake. When you fish, do fish have money in the mouth? Those of you who come from the lake, when you get a fish, do you normally have money in the mouth? So who put the money there? He knew it was there. Now, when he has put gold underground, is he aware where it is? So if he really needed the gold, would he ask you? So why is he asking you? He, we have said he was water himself, but he begging the woman to give him what? Did he need the water? He needed what? A relationship with who? A spiritual relationship with the woman, but the meeting point was at the water well. And the moment they formed a relationship, even the woman never carried the water home. You know, sometimes you think that what you need is money. But I'm here to say what you need is Jesus. And the most important thing is surrendering your soul to Christ. And the moment you form a spiritual relationship with God. You know, the only reason God is coming where you make money, Eldawabui, is only the one. The Bible says, where your heart is, is where? If you want to know your heart, what do we look? He says, where your wealth is, is where you are. And Jesus is interested in the heart. Jesus is interested in the heart. But the only direction, signal of your heart is where? Is where? Where your treasure is. Now, when he comes asking for your treasures or buoy, like the woman at the well, you are bragging. You know the woman who was saying, the well is deep and you don't have a container. And you don't have a what? To who? To the water himself. You are telling the water, the water does not have a what? Does Jesus need the container? You know, when God is asking you for tithes and offerings, you look at it and you think God is interested in your money. He has no need for your money. He has an interest in your heart. He says, if I were hungry, would I tell you? You know, engineer, 
You have started farming, so you are having two cows. And you are even feeding them with hay. Now, between your two cows and God's cow here in the park, they are called buffaloes. Which is more healthy? I'm asking, which is more healthy? God's cows are more healthy. So if he knew that God wanted the milk, he would come for you with three liters or he would milk the buffaloes and the elephants. But we are so shallow minded at times when we are talking about God seeking a relationship with you. And because God knows where your heart is, is where your money is. And he is interested in your heart. So he comes and says, brother, surrender this wallet. Surrender this what? You think his interest is wallet. His interest is not the wallet. He wants you to surrender your heart to him. And the moment you surrender your heart to him, the moment you form a relationship, Elder Obui, when you surrender your wallet, that's what Pastor Gideji will use to go and call others to come to the gospel. The moment the woman surrendered, she went to the city and she brought the entire city and she did a will go. The disciples, though they had been with Jesus all along, they never brought a soul. By the way, you know what they were saying? Osoro. The disciples were telling Jesus, allow us to bring fire from heaven and consume these Samaritans. Not even Jesus to bring fire. Who is to bring fire? They are saying, allow us. We call fire from where? Because they never cared for people who had no gospel. They would go there and buy food and come and eat and don't care about them. Let me tell you, brethren, when you have a problem in supporting evangelism, in giving tithes and offerings, you know what you are saying, Matagaro? You don't care whether other people will be lost as long as you are with the Messiah. And you have the same attitude like the disciples. They are with the Messiah. They cannot tell anybody to come and see the Messiah. That's why you will withhold your resources. But the moment you form a relationship with Jesus, the woman forgets the water, goes to the city and calls everybody to who? To Jesus. Our part and our role is one to form a spiritual relationship with God. And once you have surrendered your heart to God, you will be able to surrender your resources for the sake of the gospel. I will go, will never happen if we have no relationship. If we have not surrendered. And when God is asking you for your tithes and offerings, his interest is not the tithe and the offering. It's only that he has gone where he is sure he cannot miss you. Because where Matagaro you go Monday to Friday is not where Obui goes. Through all of us. It's not where every other person goes. So if Jesus was to look for us at our workplace, he would miss Joanne because she is in the industrial area. So the only place that she is sure at the end of the day, everyone has a wallet. Everyone has a heart. So come at the end of the day and says, a faithful tithe, a faithful heart. Irrespective of where you got it, at that point where your treasure is, is where what? Your heart is. And so God is asking for your heart. But because the doctors who are here will tell you, if we remove your heart, you will do what? If Jesus removes your heart and goes with it, you will do what? So the only thing that he can safely take is your what? Is your what? And you hold on, you are worried. 
thinking that he doesn't have. And some of us, like the woman at the well, are challenging him. You know, at times, we challenge God and think that he cannot do it without us. But the truth of the matter is, he can do it in a single day without involving you. You know, Pastor Gideji, it is a privilege. The judge manual says, to belong to the church of God is a great privilege. Elder Obui, to be involved in the church business is a great privilege. David wanted to construct the church and God said no. And he had the resources. I ask you, bring a tithe so that we can do evangelism. And you say no. Do you know God can do evangelism without any member contributing? If you are doubting, walk with me to the book of Daniel. When God decided to do an evangelistic campaign without a single church member contributing. You know, when you want to do an evangelistic campaign, Personal ministries, when you sit in the board and we are doing an evangelistic campaign, what are our considerations? We say, first of all, we need what? For what? What do we need? You know, it's not that we need money. What do we need? We need a PA system, is it? What else do we need? We need the preacher, the speakers, is it? We need a good choir. We need a pulpit start. And we need to invite people, is it? Now, one day God decided to do a crusade without church members. When you read the book of Daniel, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, an Adventist or an un-Adventist? I'm asking Nebuchadnezzar, a church member or a heathen? A church member or a heathen? A heathen. He called everybody to the plains of Dura. He did the invitation. Then he brought, a, you know, CBC. You know, nowadays you are telling us CBC. You know, CBC is not new. He brought a big statue, which was a CBC for demonstration, is it? And then he invited the choir and the PA system. And he said, when you will hear the music, when you hear the what? And the instruments, everybody to go where? A heathen or an Adventist? At the end of the day, who became the guest speaker? When the boys were thrown into the fire, Jesus is walking in the fire and the heathen becomes the guest speaker. He says, wait a minute. We threw three people in the fire and now I can see how many. And the fourth one is who? The son of God. Has he preached or he has not preached? Any member who gave? I'm asking any member who gave? The heathen did what? Church, am I communicating? God has a way of doing his work. But he honors you to come and ask you for a relationship. Ask you for a what? But at the times we mistake the relationship. And like the woman, we start saying it is not possible to enter into a relationship with you. But the moment you realize that the relationship he is asking is spiritual. And he is not interested in what you hold. He is interested in your heart. And because he knows where your money is, is where your heart is. He wants to take your heart by saying, surrender this wallet to me. And the moment we have a spiritual relationship with me, then you can rest because true rest is not consisted in what you own or what you doesn't own. It is consisted in the relationship you have with God. And if you are doubting this, Elder Obui, you have attended many, 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 many mazish. I know Obui is known as one of the chairman of mazish. Uh, he is good in that. Now, I know you have gone into so many, Elder. And I know you are involved in preparing the eulogy or the obituary. Have you ever had anybody who has died, including Moy, when we were reading the life history? We said, what did he leave behind? 
Did we talk of the acres of land? Did we talk of how many cars? Do we talk of the bank account? A man's true heart is estimated in heaven according to the a man's true value is estimated in heaven according to the capacity of heart to know God. I'm repeating, I'm quoting from Ellen White. A man's true value is estimated in heaven according to the capacity of heart to know God. Your true value is in how much you have surrendered your heart to God. When we are talking about stewardship, we are talking about surrendering your heart to God. We are talking about surrendering yourself to God. Not about surrendering your wallet to God. Surrendering your heart to God. Entering into a spiritual relationship with God. And when Jesus is coming to you, when you meet with Jesus at your bank account, don't think Jesus is interested in that account. He says, gold and silver are mine. In Haggai 2.8, he says, gold and silver are mine. And he goes on in Psalms to say, if I were hungry, I would never tell you. I'm only telling you because of the relationship. Married women who are here, when your husband comes home and he says, Nipe chai, do you assume he is asking you for tea because he could not do it in town? I'm asking, can your man have coffee in town? Can he do it in town? Now, when he is asking you for food at home, you feel happy or you feel that anakusubua? Now, ladies, are you more happy when your man is eating out or when he is eating at home? Now, answer me. Which do you prefer? Coming home to ask for food or eating out? Ladies, talk to me. Or in the Creta church, women are not allowed to talk. Paul said, women keep silent in the church. Now, which do you prefer? When he is eating all the time out or when he comes home for food? When he is coming home for food, is it that he doesn't have money? Why is he coming home? To strengthen your relationship. To strengthen your what? Relationship. And some, you know, if only you would understand that, you would know God is not asking because he needs it. He needs a what? A relationship. Can you imagine a woman saying, no, me, I don't want my, my husband asking me for food. Don't ask me for anything. Don't ask me for what? You go eat out, you go eat out. You know, it is about a relationship. It is about a what? And this time is about a spiritual relationship. It's about a what? Stewardship, God is looking for a spiritual relationship with you. He is not looking for that money. He was telling the woman, give me to drink. He never drank that water. He was not interested in the drink. It's unfortunate that the lady could say, the well is deep and you have nothing to do. Because she thought that she had control. I want you to know, you never have control over God. Have you ever heard somebody saying, Sita toa nione vila watafanya? Have you ever heard somebody saying like that? I will not give, and the project will not go on. Does it mean the project is stores? Even if you don't participate, God's work still does what? You know, it is the stupidity of this woman saying that, you cannot take it because the barrel is what? And you have no container. Little did she know that she was talking to the water. God is never after what you want. God is after a spiritual relationship with him. And the moment you form a spiritual relationship with him, when you surrender to him, you surrender with what? You surrender with what? Everything that you do what? Yes. The moment you surrender, 
Elder Obui, God's intention finally is to marry the church. Is to marry the what? Now, for those here who got married, when you married her, and she came, and now you are with her, whatever she had made when she came, you own it together, or you no longer own it together? Can you imagine marrying somebody who comes and says, yes, I'm coming, but know this. You are marrying me, but I want you to know. Everything that is mine is what? I'm coming with nothing. I'm coming with what? And when I come, I'm in a relationship with you. Everything that I make is what? Is that a true marriage? I'm, as, I'm not doing family life. It belongs to Oga. Is that a true marriage? Oga will tell you it is not. Because when you surrender, you surrender fully. But the elder Obui will stand here and sing, all oh, to Jesus I surrender. All oh, to Jesus I do what? And in the envelope he puts 50 bob. But he is singing, all oh, to Jesus I do what? And you look at the song and the person is surrendering and you ask, what have you surrendered? Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Even the time, nothing more, the time. Engineer will not have time for Jesus in the afternoon. His mass is done. In the afternoon, he is on his business. But he will sing, oh, to Jesus, I do what? And Jesus owns the time. I know, engineer, you are telling me you are so busy. But let me remind you. Another day, God locked the entire world and he said, who had the job? Did you go? Did you go? Did you die? Did you die? You know, can you imagine the world, the entire world? They said no movement, no what? Oh boy, you had the money. Did your children go to school? I'm asking, during the lockdown, were your children in school? Was the problem money? So do your school children go to school because you have money or because of the grace of God? But sometimes you think they go to school because you have what? You can have money and they stay where? How many people are at home with the money because they are sick? They are there. They have money but they can't do what? God gives you the grace and he says, I've given you six days. Be a faithful steward. Come on the Sabbath. And we spend the time together. But you don't want to spend the time together. Only a single day. Engineer. You get bored when you come to church. So you only come 11. Two hours you are done. And in the afternoon you are not here. In the presence of God you get bored. And then God does the mistake of taking you to heaven for eternity. If two hours you get bored, what will heaven happen in eternity? You know, some guys will reach heaven and tell God, it's too boring. So God knows that. That's why you never do that mistake. You can imagine quoting somebody you are dating. And the person gives you a maximum of two hours. But you are planning to get married and live for eternity together. Can it work? The more closer you are to getting married, the more time you spend it together. Jesus wants to marry the church. And that's why we have to spend more time with Jesus. That's why when it comes to Sabbath, you wake up happy knowing that I'm going for a date with the one who I love, who is Jesus. We spend the whole day together. Pastor Oga, come and pray. Let these people go for lunch. We are going to meet in the afternoon as we share more. This week, I understand tomorrow we are meeting 4.30 to 5.30. The topic tomorrow will be, now I know. Virginia, now I know. You know, up to now you don't know. So come tomorrow so that you know. That will be tomorrow 4.30. And then 5.30 every other day from Monday to Friday. We are going to edit on Friday. As we share, God is looking for you, not your money. Our ministerial secretary is here. Who wants to say, God, I wish.
to enter into a spiritual relationship with you. I wish to surrender my heart to you. If my heart will be accompanied by my wallet, it's you to know. But me, I'm not surrendering my heart, wallet. I'm surrendering my heart to you. But if my wallet is part of my heart, I'm coming to you. If that's your prayer, lies our pastor to pray with us. And in the afternoon, please keep time. Our loving Father and God in heaven, our creator and our redeemer, we stand in your presence to glorify you, to worship you, indeed because you are worthy. And thank you for reminding us this afternoon that everything you have created. And Father, you are not interested in the material possessions that we have, but you are interested in a mutual relationship, a spiritual relationship with us. And therefore, again we come, knowing very well that it's in you we move and have our being. Therefore, it's important for us indeed to develop this very relationship. We come surrendering once again that Father, take our hearts and have a place and a space in our lives. Walk with us, talk with us. And indeed, we pray that you teach us how to relate with possessions that they may not take away our time and may not take away our interest in you, but that this can be a means of developing us and developing your work in this world. Bless your people and thank you for your man servant who has given us this message again. Even as this week, the series of this meeting will continue. We pray that you continue to reveal yourself in our hearts as we prepare for your soon return. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we we coming to the end of this uh, divine service, and I want to ask the choristers to come for the final s song uh, for us to be able to disperse from this uh, gathering. Otherwise, uh, uh, after lunch. We are meeting here at 2.30, exactly at 2.30. Let's all rise with hymn number 214. Ciao!
further say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. Amen. As we disperse, we are going to use the two exits, one on my left and one on my right. And meanwhile, Amaya Oyugi, you can see the church treasurer. May God bless you. And I will search no.